It is said that Ernest Hemingway could smell death. That is why his descriptions of death are unmatched. Many a times he left a place, suddenly, like a cafe, and then the place crashed and burned. The cafe was bombed. He had the ability to see the angel of death. This very ability allowed him to write The Snows of Kilimanjaro. In this story, he predicted his own death, not like a hack who types out, and then he jumped out the window, and then, well, jumps out the window, but how a true author does it, by observing things as they are and following a possible path to the very end. Why am I talking about this when I'm supposed to talk about Rushdie's knife? It is not because Rushdie also saw the angel of death walk towards him on the day of the attack. So it's you. Here you are. Rather, it is because he also predicted the attack in the novel he wrote, before the attack happened, in Victory City. When I was younger, so much younger than today, I used to be a completionist. I'm not that anymore, but for two authors, Chuck Palahniuk and Salman Rushdie. After I had finished reading Victory City, I felt Rushdie is done for. He has written his last great novel, mind you, not his greatest novel, we can argue about which one that is, but certainly his last great novel. Where can he go from here? The journey that started with Grimace has reached its end, I thought. I'm sure he is working on another novel, but I will believe it only when I get to read it. Knife feels like an addendum. It is fantastic writing. It has Rushdie at his creative best. But I want more. I want a true blue novel. I want this to be just a companion piece to that novel. Most of us believe our lives have narrative continuity. Joseph Anton made me think Salman Rushdie believes so too. But that book felt like written from a distance. Knife has an immediacy and it feels like Rushdie is trying to impose a narrative on his life, as that may be easier for his audience, but he himself doesn't believe in it. Of course, he lets that slip through as well, and on purpose. It is a disjointed narrative masquerading as a largely linear narrative. Knife, Meditations After an Attempted Murder, presents a cut-up Rushdie. He is, at different times, a great writer, a great man, a free speech near martyr, a party animal, petty, an ordinary person. And all these fragments do not sit together as a complete whole. This could make the book a little challenging at times, but it also makes it much more real than his earlier memoir, Joseph Anton, yet also more elusive. For all its immediacy and creative brilliance, Knife leaves certain areas unexplored. It's as if Rushdie and the artist is grappling with the fear that his life might overshadow his art, and in doing so, shies away from the broader context that has shaped his public persona. Rushdie's prose shines brightest when describing the attack itself. His words, so it's you, here you are, followed by, why now after all these years? Capture the surreal moment when fiction and reality collided in his life. The attacker becomes a sort of time traveller, a murderous ghost from the past, a chilling embodiment of the threat that has loomed over Rushdie for decades. In the pages of the book, Rushdie refuses to name the terrorist who attacked him. From the book, I am not even sure if he is a terrorist. He is called the A, as simple a name as P2C2E. There is another work presently being criticised roundly for Ahem misrepresenting terrorists, IC 814, The Kandahar Hijack. They complain how can the storytellers humanise terrorists. I wonder if these wonderful critics be all praise for how the A is represented in the chapter named after him. In this chapter, Salman Rushdie has a conversation with the A, all made up, it is as interesting as Nana Patakar's conversation with Kasab in Ram Gopal Varma's The Attacks of 26 11th. The big difference is that Rushdie seems to readily agree that he represents the A as poorly as the A represents the philosophy he claims to represent. The strange thing is that the straw man version of the A is as real as the, the scarecrow that stands in the fields. The scarecrow is real. The straw man version of the A is real too. 
even if it is not the A, and in that strange fact lies the beauty of this book.